You cannot breathe through your nose doing that. After the Sanjay Mortimer Rep Rep Fest, we came down to Lincolnshire to meet with Dave here at Harvey Motorsport where they make some of the world's fastest carts. Dave, talk to us about what we're looking at here other than a trophy winning monster of a cart. As, as you said, there are some of the fastest carts in the world in many, many countries too. This particular example has won uh, three Grand Prix titles this year. No kidding. Three, from three different countries, France, England and the Netherlands, which we're fairly well assured it's not been done before. We've put together a good package, particularly with the driver, with the chassis, and with the engine. The carts are produced in the Czech Republic. The actual uh, frames. The actual frames, yep. yeah. And so are the engines at a, at, a, at a different factory, VM Motors. Okay. Specialists in building this type of engine. You don't win three Grand Prix titles if you're not a specialist in this to some extent, right? No, it's been a lot of hard work over many years to get to where we've got. It doesn't right. happen overnight. No, and it certainly doesn't. You always have to have a little bit of luck along the way. You've recently been experimenting with using 3D printing yeah. in making some things on these carts that are yeah. making life easier for you, life easier for the drivers, and theoretically, hmm. more horsepower out of these vehicles. Well, yeah, the air intake duct has to be a specific size. Prior to that was machined in the mouth of nylon, which is quite heavy, and we were able then to get them produced locally with 3D printing, along with our plug cap retainers, which help stop the plug caps coming off. And these are like pieces that don't exist. You can mill the air intake piece, but mm. the spark plug retainer, though, no. no one makes them. Nobody makes them, no. And so you are effectively as close as you can to guaranteeing that the spark plug wire stays on top of that spark plug, You've got it. providing an unreasonable amount of spark and to an unreasonably high pressure engine. This is a 250 cc motor producing over 100 brake horsepower. But for reference, just, just for those of you that, that are following along at home, your car is four cylinders, probably around one to two liters. This is a quarter of a liter and makes maybe an extra 50 horsepower at best above what this makes. And oh yeah, this one has two crankshafts. It's two motors that are put together to produce this kind of power and they're matched so that exactly. they cancel out each other's vibrations. That's right. How have you seen 3D printing assisting in your ability to do this kind of thing? I'm, I'm sure there are many different things that, you know, with a bit of imagination that we'll be able to use mm -hmm. on these. The number volumes aren't great. They're not right. massive. They're not, we're not into thousands and thousands of parts, sometimes tens, sometimes a few hundred. Right. But the cost of having molds made are quite high for injection molding, et cetera, et cetera. So to, to go down the 3D printing route, obviously with different materials available now. I understand, I'm no expert at this. That's what you guys do. You know, we're open to all sorts of suggestions for different things that we can make. Based on looking around your shop here, the one thing that you appear to be one heck of an expert in is winning trophies. There are shelves that are obviously purposely built to put trophies on. You've been doing this for a minute or two, huh? Um, yes, I've been racing since about 1984. I don't personally drive now. We have a very, very good team ethic Clearly. between us. <laughs> as near as you'll get to a family affair. Works very well for us. Also look after a lot of other people too. Passing on the knowledge that we've gained over the years too to help other people not make the mistakes that we made along the way, or try to. I want to pose a challenge to our audience. You're looking at these cars here. There's quite a few in the shop. We can only show you a couple of them, but there is so much opportunity on this cart here to make it better with 3D printing. I want you guys in the comments to start bringing out ideas. Things like body panels, don't bother. Carbon fiber, this baby, way stronger than anything we can 3D print and specifically way lighter. I'm thinking of things like air ducts. Air ducts, yeah. Things where we can yeah. utilize math and computers to make air ducts better. And this is not an air intake, by the way. This is a brake cooling duct. So is this. And they're traditionally manufactured. Do they work? Sure. But if they worked 
5%, 10% better, that's five or 10% longer braking before mm. you start dealing with brake fade. That helps win races because you can brake yeah, those, you know, a little bit later. Those. Can we talk a little bit about the motor and things in this in this car? Because there's a lot of engineering here and 3D printing yeah. is just barely getting into this kind of thing. The engines themselves, like I said, are, are specifically designed for car racing. Yes. It's not been taken out of something else. The idea of the tandem twin is so one cylinder's behind the other, mm -hmm to keep it narrow, to give the space for the driver to get in. That so, makes sense, yeah, so if yeah, had, yeah. If you had a big wide engine, which they have produced in the past, wasn't very successful. This is this is a very successful engine. You're trying to make things as light as possible. So there's always a trade-off between making it as light as possible and its reliability. It is a water-cooled unit with its own integral water pump, six-speed gearbox. Yep, sequential, uh, sequential, the sequential change. Solid rear axles or got a different Yeah, all, all carts must have a solid rear axle. Independent braking on the front, live axle braking on the rear. Very nice. But the brakes are awesome. The brakes on this cart look bigger mm. than the brakes on my car. Yeah, quite possibly are. Yeah, wide slicks for as yeah. small as this cart yeah. is. What type of speeds do these things get up to during a race on average? In, in the UK and in Europe, we're hovering around about the 150 mile an hour mark with Taking all the aero off to do straight line mm -hmm. running, you could get as much as 160 plus in certain places, especially straight line racing. Are you able to adjust the aero throughout oh, yes. the race? Not throughout the race, no, that's not allowed. But we, we dang, we, we do, you do a setup whilst you can't know, do like contested. a DRS setup. No, unfortunately cool. not. <laughs> it has been tried in the past, and all these little things have been tried, but uh, of course. We're, we're outlawed as too uh, complicated. So. Boo hiss. <laughs> we also rely on the floor tray for, for downforce, aero. Right. Suck it to the ground. You suck it to the ground, so you obviously limit your drag factor on, on, on the car. And your floor tray is just a flat sheet of carbon Kevlar composite? It's carbon Kevlar composite, yeah. yeah. Some manufacturers <laughs> use polypropylene. We use carbon Kevlar for the seat and for the floor tray. It's a good, strong, flexible material. And it with, takes with, a beating. With, with good longevity, yeah. 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 Easily fixed and, yeah. quite frankly, it looks Freaking awesome. You said 150 miles an hour. Yeah. But I'm also told you have a dynamometer here with ram air intake yep. that can go that fast. Can we go fire up the dyno and see what Florida Man looks like at 155 mile an hour? Too right. Yeah. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. We're now in the dyno room. And if you've ever seen a dynamometer before, you might realize this one's a little bit small, but it's not about the size that matters. It's about what it's capable of. Dave, can you talk to us about what a dynamometer is? What makes this one particularly special? And then I'm told we can turn it on. <laughs> it's specifically made for small ATVs and, and, and carts. Mm -hmm. It can cope with speeds of up to 200 mile an hour, I guess, with horsepower up to 200 horsepower too. We don't get quite near that. Electronic eddy brake, air fuel meters for both cylinders on the twin cylinder carts. And, and it's past the resistance is the fact that we can do air speed up to 150 miles an hour as a ram air, which follows the wheel speed of the cart when it's being driven on here at full speed. For those that don't know with dynos, often you're strapping a car to it and you're putting your foot to the floor and you're seeing how much horsepower it makes. That That's what these do. They, they determine horsepower and torque. But what a lot of shops don't have is this. Your vehicle is forced to just suck in still air. Hmm. Well, that's not realistic. When you're going 150 mile an hour, sure. the air is also moving at 150 mile an hour. This forces air in exactly. at the same speed. With the forced air induction that we use on the carts mm -hmm. into the air boxes, it acts like a small turbocharger that approximately about 80 miles an hour it starts to work and continues to work right through, increasing horsepower at the top end of its power range where it really needs it. By the way, what 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 is the top range of that RPM that you're running these carts at? 14,000 really is what I consider a realistic figure, but some drivers do push the limit and they'll take them to 14 and a half. Longevity tells you you don't really want to do that <laughs> consistently, but but well, it's okay on, on, on short bursts. For reference, the, the average vehicle stops at about 6,500 RPM. So you're more than double that and you're making yeah. power all the way all through. All the way, yeah, yeah, all the way through. Yeah, that's uh, Absolutely. 
spicy. <laughs> How much do those motors weigh, by the way? About 32 kilos. 32 kilos, the better part of 75 pounds. And it makes a hundred horse, oh my gosh. Yeah. How much does the whole cart weigh? Without driver, that one that we've been looking at outside is at about 130 kilos total then, plus the driver. But driver's gonna weigh about a hundred kilo, no? Yeah. Well, no, 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 no that, I weigh no. about a hundred kilo, um, right. The minimum weight after a race that we have to be is 218 kilos. Total. Total, as over the scales at the end of the race to be uh, legal. 218 kilos yeah. making around 100 horsepower. Yeah. 2.18 kilos per. That's fast. <laughs> per horsepower. I'm not- A lot of power. Yeah, I, we're gonna put some of the, you know, most well-known supercar numbers on the screen for what their power to weight ratio is. But I can tell you that that's quite a good power yeah, to weight ratio. Yeah. I'm gonna go get in the front. Let's, okay. uh, let's do it. Let's do it. Hit it, Dave. You cannot breathe through your nose doing that. There, there's too much pressure. I cannot breathe in through my nose. I had to open really? my mouth and let the air come in. Have you ever tried? I've no, never I'm tried not. that before. I'm normally stood with this. <laughs> I've never experienced that. I'm like, I, I, I could not produce enough pressure. Aerodynamics are cool. <laughs> it looked great on the camera. I bet it did. That was gonna, that, that's a three camera shot. That, you've you've definitely got a new hairstyle there. Do sure. I? Yeah, yeah. Is it better? Full flow back. Yeah, Full flow back, <laughs> yeah. Full flow back. <laughs> really like it here at Harvey Motorsport, and if we didn't have a plane to catch, I probably could stay here all day. But it's awesome to see that melding of traditional subtractive manufacturing with new school cool additive manufacturing and 3D printing. We would love to hear from you guys what you think could be 3D printed on these carts to help Dave win more races because we're going to be working with the sponsor of this video, Construct 3D, Jacob here, who's actually been running one of our B-roll cameras, so thank you, sir. But Jacob and his mom run Construct 3D, literally a family owned business right here in the UK that manufacture 3D printers. So if you happen to be in the UK or anywhere else and you wanna get some really awesome machines, check them out, links are in that description below. And check out Harvey Motorsport as well. If you happen to be into the kart racing scene, Dave literally makes some of the best carts in the world. But we would love to hear from you all what you would like to see 3D printed because Jacob is gonna be the one that goes through and does all that work because we have a plane to catch, so it, it's on you. Yeah, you know, I, I have faith in you, sometimes. Anyways, don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed. And if you made it this far, check out the Smurf video linked right below me, and next to it will be our tour of Prusa. We'll see you all in those comments, but stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones, and as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one.